What's going on guys? Behind me is our 2022 Ford F-350. Uh, just last month we went over the two years of ownership and today I'm going to tell you guys about that two years, what we like, what we don't like, and what we think overall of the truck. So stay tuned and thank you for watching. Before we get too in depth with the review, uh, I'm going to give you an overview of the truck. Like I said before, it is a 22 F350. It is a long bed. It has a 6.7 Power Stroke diesel in it. That has 475 horsepower and 1,050 pound-feet of torque. It is a beast. Uh, also, it has a 10-speed transmission, which is just the best thing ever. Um, along with the long bed, you get a 48-gallon fuel tank. I absolutely love it. Probably one of my favorite things about the truck. The truck does have the XL package, which is basically a work truck. It is a work truck. Uh, it has vinyl seats and it has a vinyl floor, which we absolutely love. Uh, it also has the STX package, which comes with these wheels, which I like. And it has a lot of chrome on it, which eh, I'm okay with. The towing capacity for our truck is 21,000 pounds. Uh, the payload is just over 4,500 pounds. And the truck weighs in, uh, put it on a cat scale, and it weighs in just over 8,200 pounds. Uh, it's, it's pretty hefty. So it does have 355 gears. Um, that is mid-range. I think you can get 373s, maybe 331s also. Um, so we're right in the middle of the road. It's got tons of power, so it tows what we have with no issues with the 355s. Number one question for most folks is fuel mileage. Uh, I'm not going to give you a line of crap here. We get around 18 unloaded. Um, yes, we can do better, but we're not getting 24 or 25. I, I don't know who is. I don't know how. Uh, but when we tow, we're getting around 12, 12 and a half normally. And we have a 10,000 pound cargo trailer, uh, gooseneck, and we also have a conventional uh, camper travel trailer that weighs around 5,500 pounds. Uh, we get anywhere from 12 to 14 miles per gallon when towing that and it doesn't seem to matter what kind of weight you have there. For both trailers, it's about the same. Okay, now we're gonna get into a little more detail uh, looking at this truck. And we're gonna start with the exterior. Up front, first modification I made to the truck was cutting this massive valence down. When they come from the factory, this thing is like four to six inches, this gigantic. Uh, you can buy the trimmer valence for it, but I just took a saw to it. <laughs> and honestly, I think it looks fine. So uh, really, the front looks pretty good. The only thing this one has that would be different from most, uh, we do have the 360 cameras. It does have this little washer that pops out here, and it washes the camera off. That's pretty cool. It does come with halogen bulbs, which we replaced with F-150 LEDs. They actually sent us over bulbs to try out. They are crazy bright. Uh, some folks hate the LED bulbs and I get it, but these have been nice, I like them a lot. All right, in the engine bay. First thing you'll notice, there's no hood liner. Uh, kind of sucks, but I guess work truck is not gonna have that. But I've also heard that a Lariat does not have that now. Kind of strange. Uh, as you can see, there's zero room underneath to work on anything. Uh, this truck does have dual batteries, which I think is standard on a diesel, but it also has dual alternators, which are down there somewhere. Good luck finding those. Um, I can put the output of those here on the screen, and that is pretty handy for towing. Uh, we have inverters on both of our trailers, and one runs the refrigerator constantly, so it's nice to be able to keep those batteries charged while we're towing. Up here we have the upper fuel filter. I've only changed this once along with the rear fuel filter. Uh, it was not a hard job to do. It was a bit intimidating, but I think the next time around it won't be an issue. Uh, oil changes on this truck are probably the easiest of any truck I have owned in a long time. Let's get under here and I'll show you. Hopefully you can see that uh, just beside the oil pan is your gigantic oil filter 
all very easy to get to. Um, like I said, easiest oil change of any vehicle I have owned in a long, long time. All right, coming around to the side, uh, the tires on these trucks, uh, these are obviously stocks. Goodyear Wranglers, they have held up well for me. I've heard complaints on these things that they only last 30,000. Uh, we've got 17,000 now, and we've got tons of tread left. And I have rotated these every oil change, which I am doing at 7,500 miles. So as far as suspension, uh, everything's stock. And the truck rides pretty good. Um, for a F-350, I have no complaints on that at all. Um, you know, I was expecting an extremely rough ride, but it really, it really rides good for what it is. Uh, the brakes, they are really good. They're very strong. They are also very dusty. Tow mirrors. Uh, the only, maybe not even a complaint, but the only thing I wish I had were power tow mirrors. And I know that sounds ridiculous because you can get out and grab them and open them or extend them. But, uh, the problem is every time I push these in, uh, we hook to a trailer somewhere along the line and then both me and my wife have to stop somewhere along the way and pull the mirrors out because we always forget. Uh, very small issue, but it's, it's really not an issue, but something I wish we had. I do have vent visors. They are in-channel uh, ABS visors. Not a huge fan, but mostly it's because of the truck. Uh, these automatic windows, when they go up, they hit that in-channel part and they go right back down. Not sure how long they're going to stay. I may pull them off soon. So we do have the extended factory step. I really like this. So when you're trying to grab anything in the bed when the tonneau cover is rolled up, uh, of course these just make it really easy. And I just think they're practical. I uh, kind of wish they were all black, but it kind of goes with the rest of the truck. No big deal. One of the reasons I wish they were all black, um, F-150 LEDs also sent us running board lights. They are under here. Let's see if we can see them. Under there. And uh, they are pretty cool, but this chrome makes everything shine so much. It, it honestly looks a little too bright for me. Kind of gets on my nerves. But uh, again, just a preference, not really that big of a deal. F-150 LEDs again, thank you guys. Sent us these Spartan lights. Uh, these are reverse lights. Obviously they go on the back of the truck. My problem with that was these things would be pointing right at the trailer if I was trying to back up. So I came up with this idea. I mounted them here. They are controlled on each side by the upfitter switches. I haven't used them all that much, but they do work well when I have used them. Uh, it shines out to the side and back, and that really helps when you're back in a camper in the dark. Uh, obviously, this is your fuel door. Diesel, that's where your def goes. Don't mix them up, causes lots of major issues. Thankfully, I've never done that. So back here on the back, we do have uh, airlift. 5,000, I believe they're called Ultimate um, Airbags. They do have the internal bump stop. And these have been great for our heavier trailer. Uh, you can really level everything out and they ride very nice. Um, another, one of my favorite things that I've added uh, is this retractable step. It is an amp research. And I actually used uh, my Ford points that I got when I bought the truck to purchase this you get like 75,000 points which makes you feel like you could buy a new set of tires but really it was uh, only a couple hundred dollars but I did get this step and I have to say it's pretty awesome and I don't know if I'll ever own another truck without one the first thing I got when I got the truck was a roll-up tonneau cover I really like these things um, they are cheap and very effective this one has worked well it's it's waterproof i have no issues with leaking anywhere and it was only about 250 or 300 dollars somewhere around there uh, what i like about it is when you roll it up it only takes up a little bit of real estate right here it sits about this high it doesn't block your view from inside the truck 
and it's out of the way from anything in the bed. So I just think they're worth it. I really like them. It's worked pretty well so far. I have had a few issues with this latch system. It gets hung up every now and again, but honestly, not that big of a deal. On this side, we have a power connector, and this is for our DC to DC charger on our gooseneck. Also, this was another F-150 LEDs product. LED lights for the bed. Really nice, very useful. Love them when we're camping. Uh, the bed liner, it, it's held up very well. Um, I'm not sure the brand, the dealership took it to a shop and had it done. They also had the gooseneck hitch installed. Um, and they also installed the seven pin connector. All of that is held up well, it's all worked well. No complaints here. When you purchase the XL version, it doesn't have power assist or any kind of assist when you lower it down. So I purchased this uh, gas strut to install there. It works really well and I'm, it was fairly cheap. On the back of the truck, uh, we have a three inch hitch. And these are all my adapters to make my uh, hitch for my camper work. Then you got these ridiculous things that they have now changed on the 23 model. And that's awesome because these are a pain in the butt to deal with. Uh, your, your hooks on like a travel trailer, they will connect to this, but it's really hard. Um, I do plan to get shackles to hang here and then you can just hook to those. Should make that a lot easier. So it does have the FX4 package and I thought in the past that included uh, shocks and skid plates. On this truck we just have the standard shocks, but we do have skid plates and a sticker. <laughs> so I guess that's all you got at that point. And you know when I bought my truck, uh, really things were very limited. In fact, I couldn't believe I actually found a truck on a lot. Uh, that's how we ended up with white, which is a color that I said I would never own. However, it has grown on me. I do like it a lot. And yeah, I don't, I don't know if I'd buy another white truck, but I, I do like the one I have now. All right, let's check out the interior. Uh, the interior is not perfectly clean, but it's not terrible. So we're just going to have to deal with it. So we do have vinyl seats. It is a bench seat. Um, we also have vinyl floors. And one of the downfalls to the XL package and the SDX package, I suppose, is everything is manual as far as the seats. So this is a lumbar. And then you have the adjustment here for the seat front to back. And then this adjusts the backrest. Really hasn't been a big deal to me because I'm the only one who drives for the most part. My wife does every now and again, but it, it, it really hasn't been that big of a deal to us. So there's the payload, 4511. And it has the 12,400 pound gross vehicle weight rating. With the bench seat, you get this basic uh, console, which is really the seat back. It has storage underneath, cup holders, and a place to put your phone. It folds up, obviously, to show another seat. It does have a headrest, I've just taken it off. You have storage under the seat. This cup holder, I added that uh, right after I bought the truck and that's been really nice to have. This is our airlift uh, compressor. It is, you know, of course tied into our airbags. We can add air or take air out on the road. I really love that, I really use it a lot. Up here you have a regular USB charging port and a USB-C. Those are both tied into the SYNC 3 system. Uh, this vehicle came with the trailer backup assist. Um, I've never actually used this, but the camper we purchased actually has the little checkered flag target on the hitch, so I really need to try it out. Of course you have your trailer brake. Um, you can adjust that there. Four-wheel drive, if you pull this out, that will lock the differential. It is electronic lock. Of course, four high, four low. Um, everything else is pretty standard. Up here, you got controls for your lights. Got a holder for sunglasses. 
and we have our upfitter switches which i only have two connected at the moment to the lights down by the running boards so your steering wheel has all the standard controls i was kind of surprised that the work truck package had this but they all work great and nice to have also something else to add uh, you got power door locks power windows pretty standard on most vehicles now but the work truck sometimes you don't get those all right let's ride around a little and I'll tell you some pros and cons of the truck and also give you my thoughts on two years of ownership so this is uh, what the cruise said at 60 miles per hour I'm looking at like 1400 rpms um, this is where we'll get our best fuel mileage and I'll show you on the gauge uh, it does have a fuel economy gauge to give you really a real time of what you're getting uh, they don't make it very easy to read kind of wish it gave a number we also have a last 30 minutes uh, fuel gauge and I normally look at this screen which gives you uh, you know miles till empty how many miles you've gone and then your average MPGs. Okay, we're gonna start from zero and get on the interstate. So I don't know if you can tell by looking at the gauges, but uh, the traction control is doing all it can to keep this thing from spinning and it kind of feels like you're all over the place like it's slamming the throttle down it's letting off even though i'm holding it in the same spot um, it's just doing everything it can to keep the truck from spinning so uh it's a little crazy it can turn traction control off uh it spins a lot but it you know still really fast acceleration especially for a gigantic vehicle like this so uh, this is cruising on the interstate 70 miles an hour and we're like 1600 rpm something like that okay so now we're uh, cruising at 75 around 1700 something like that um, pretty quiet so some of the gauges I use the most, uh, this one is what I normally have it set on, but when I'm towing, I like to go into display mode and I can see my uh, oil temps, transmission temperatures, things like that, um, very helpful. Air filter. or death. Um, death usage really depends on if you're towing or not. Uh, if you're towing you're going to use quite a bit more. Uh, if you're not towing you really don't use much at all. So uh, I've never really run the numbers on it but you know it's just uh, it's just a necessity if you still have a stock truck. Uh, all right we're gonna get off the interstate here hit the brakes and let it start slowing down um, the exhaust brake is on There we 
go. That was a slightly more aggressive uh, takeoff and not foot to the floor. It's a lot more composed when you do that. It sure feels a lot better. It doesn't seem like the truck is struggling to keep traction. You may wonder, have I had any issues with the truck? And the answer is no, not really. Um, I have, uh, I've only had one problem that I wish would have been fixed by the dealership and I did ask them to take a look at it. Um, I've got a slight air leak somewhere in this front windshield and it's near this front pillar on the driver's side and uh, of course they couldn't hear anything uh, you know they hear you know, hearing issues I guess uh, but anyway they they couldn't hear anything um, and I really didn't push it because it's really not that loud but I do hear it and it hasn't gotten any louder since I've owned the truck over two years but it is still there and uh, you know it's, it's really annoying I do have an open recall on the truck um, I do plan to get that done pretty soon and they uh, I think it's just a reprogram of the computer and the transmission and um, yeah I, I don't I don't have any issues with it I have had I have had an issue with a hard downshift when in tow haul mode and I have heard that this could fix that, so I'm hoping that's the case. Okay, so uh, what are the pros and cons of the truck? Uh, I'll start with the pros. Um, obviously the power, uh, we use it for towing, and you can't beat this truck, I don't think, for towing. Um, stability, definitely the truck is extremely stable. The long bed helps that out. Uh, the long bed, has some downfalls but overall I really like the long bed and stability is one of the main reasons uh, the other reason I like the long bed is the 48 gallon fuel tank it's crazy it, it is awesome uh, I'll show you here we recently took a trip and we got over we put over 500 miles on one tank towing uh, we were towing our 10,000 pound trailer and to me that's impressive and it's it's really nice to not have to worry about stopping for fuel all the time another pro for this truck is resale uh, not that I'm gonna sell the truck but from the day we bought the truck uh, we bought it just before things got crazy with the truck market now a month later you couldn't find a truck anywhere and prices were marked up at least ten thousand dollars so from that point on this truck was worth um it went up to fourteen thousand dollars over what i paid for it the value was right now it's about six thousand and this is over two years ago and it's still valued on Kelly Blue Book. Now this may mean nothing, but again, I'm not selling it, so I don't care. Uh, but $6,000 more than what I paid for it out the door. I've never owned a vehicle that did that. We are in really weird times, not just for vehicles, obviously, but I've never seen anything like it. The STX package, the value of the STX package is awesome. I just I think Ford got it right with that. I think there are a few things that they could add to that package that would make it even better. And from what I've seen, the 2023 trucks have added a few more items uh, to that package. And I just think it's great. Ford's done an excellent job with the STX package. I absolutely love it. I get compliments on this truck all the time. And then when I tell someone it's a work truck, it's got vinyl interior, they're, they're kind of confused. There are a few cons to the truck. Um, the upfront cost of a diesel is just absolutely crazy. 10,000 or more, uh, depending on what you get. They've got a new high output, I think it's more than $10,000. And that, that just seems a little bit ridiculous. Well folks, I tried to drive around a little and uh, let you see how the truck acts, but my camera didn't really wanna work. So uh, I'll continue on with my cons here. Um, the maintenance cost is obviously a con. Uh, you're buying three gallons of oil 
you're buying a filter, you're going to have to replace fuel filters uh, constantly. It's a lot more than a gas truck. It is definitely a con for buying a diesel along with the upfront cost. Uh, again, this is pretty obvious, but the turning radius on this truck is nuts. Um, it takes a gigantic parking lot to turn around. It's not the easiest to park, but I found if you plan ahead and you know where you're going, uh, it, you can work around that. And I really, I don't mind it anymore. One of the main things that really bothers me on this truck is, has to do with the 360 camera system. Uh, it doesn't utilize the cameras like it really should why it doesn't work with turn signals i will never understand um i get they don't want you to look at the screen but come on you you got this giant vehicle you got blind spots not terrible but you got blind spots especially when towing when i put the turn signal on it should it should show me what's on that side why won't it work with turn signals it's it blows my mind maybe sync 4 fix that uh, one of the other things that I've, I've had a video on in the past, you can go check that out if you want to. Um, the gauge for, you, you have a gauge in the tow settings that you can set up for each individual trailer that you tow. Uh, I started using that when we first got it for our big trailer we call Big Red. And it really doesn't work. Uh, you you got to make sure that bef so when you tow you connect the trailer it's good it starts counting mileage which is what what you want uh, but the problem is when you get back when you get home you back everything in I jump out and start working on you know unhooking everything and a lot of times I'll turn my truck off um, while I have the truck turned off I'm gonna unhook the trailer I'm gonna unplug the trailer put everything up then I start the truck up and drive off and park the truck. Well, the truck is not smart enough to know that the trailer is not plugged in anymore and it continues to count mileage. I, I just can't believe that is, I can't believe that. Like, I couldn't believe it then. I'm actually kind of over it at this point. I know it doesn't do it. I don't even try to use it. I don't even look at that gauge. There's no telling what kind of mileage we have. Uh, the worst part is we have two different trailers now. It would be really nice to keep up with the mileage on those. Uh, but for the one we rent out, I actually do that manually. Would be cool if the truck would help us out with that though. So that's, that's a pretty big downfall to me. And uh, last but not least, and I, I don't even want to mention this, if it wasn't for Facebook groups or online forums, which can be great, but also are annoying at times, CP4 pumps on these diesel trucks. Um, Ford obviously has that. The problem is the diesel fuel. Uh, in the United States, we don't have the correct lubrication in our diesel fuel. I don't know why. Cetane ratings aren't where they should be. It's a fuel issue. It's not a, it's not a pump issue, although the pumps do fail because of that. So I guess it is a pump issue. It's a bunch of craziness. Uh, I use an additive every time I fill up. I use uh, Hot Shot Secrets Everyday Diesel Treatment. Um, it's supposed to help cetane ratings and lubricity in the fuel. Maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. I'm not here to argue that. I just don't want that pump to go out. They have finally come out with replacement pumps that are supposed to be better, but they haven't been out long enough uh, for me to get one. Also, I'm still under warranty. So I'm hoping if I have issues, it'll be covered. Uh, but there, I said it, CP4, it's on the con list, even though some people will be all upset because it's not a, it's not a pump problem in a way. Well, that about does it for my two year review on this truck. Overall, I'm extremely happy with it. I don't plan to get rid of it anytime soon. And hopefully I can give you guys a four year review and I hope it's just as positive uh, if you're looking one of these trucks, don't be afraid of it. The 6.7s have been really good, really good engines, um, fairly reliable from what I've seen, except for your old CP4 that we got to bring up every time. Anyway, don't worry about that. Please check out our other videos. If you have any questions or comments, please leave those below. I will get back to you. If you want to see something, uh, maybe I left something out or 
you want to see something with with more detail let me know i'll be happy to make a video for you uh, until next time guys hope you guys stay safe and we'll see you then